Hello, partners. <laughs> Howdy, partner. Howdy. <laughs> Howdy. We're America. Glorified Lord. <laughs> Broadcasting all over the world today from the United States of America. From U.S. to the rest. Yes. From the U.S., from the West of the U.S. to the Northwest, from the Northwest of the U.S. Yes. To the rest. To the East Coast, to the rest of the world. To the rest of We're the world. We're excited to be in your home, in your car with you. Come on, that's Straight fun. Straight out of kingdom. Yep. And we've got some good stuff that the Lord has given us and we're excited about it because every time God speaks, there's life, there's change, there's a miracle, there's creation, there's destruction to whatever is from darkness, whatever is wrong. So that's very exciting. That's it. So we want to invite you to um, post this on your social media, invite people it, it will be a blessing. You know, we've been doing this for, wow. Well, Healing Rooms had just had its uh, one-year anniversary with hundreds and hundreds of people blessed and healed and receiving breakthrough, even in their emotions, in their mind, uh, all sorts of miracles, but especially physically from symptoms and most instantaneous. So that's exciting. We will be praying at the end of our teaching uh, here on Curology. And then, so let us know towards the end what your symptoms are that you want to be healed from. And then uh, we'll let you know when to do that so that we can see it because we won't be scrolling the whole time. Then also, if you would like more uh, personal ministry with uh, one of our, well, uh, our Zoom healing rooms has several ministers in each room. Uh, healing technicians, uh, some of them are ordained pastors, uh, and others have been trained in uh, how to hear from God for you, and to find the solution to what has been hindering your healing, or what to do, uh, how to go about it. So there's always a word of life for you, you can make an appointment there, and it should be uh, in the text uh, right there in the comments, but you can text the word healing to the number, Seattle number 206-567-1400. Everybody say it, 206-567-1400. It's an easy number. You can see if there's a Zoom uh, appointment available still, and um, but we can get started. I'm excited. Let's go. Fun stuff. Let us go. <laughs> so some of you are here to be trained in how to minister to people. You know, people need, need the Lord. Sandy people Patty. need the Lord. What will we do, right? If we don't hear from people you, Lord. The, the Lord. Lord. People. I don't know the rest. That's all I know. <laughs> da, 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 da. We had to do like a. People need the Lord. We did some kind of thing People like that when I was in choir. The Lord. Da, 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 oh, da, da. You keep taking away the words. That's because. <laughs> mm -hmm. When will we realize? Yeah, something like that. That we must give our lives for people need the Lord. I was in choir, okay. had to sing it. Yeah, don't me remember too. a thing. We sang it in Holland in, in our Bible college choir. <laughs> But you know what? Every night that we were doing our Bible college crusades, people got delivered and healed because we pointed them to Jesus. So that's what I want to do. I want to point you to the Lord tonight. People need the Lord. People need the Lord. You need the Lord. You know, there's always questions. So when it comes to a breakthrough, when it comes to a miracle, when it comes to healing, when it comes to deliverance, breakthrough, there are questions before you get to faith, you know, uh, there's a question of like, whose fault is it? We see that numerous times in the Bible. Who did it, Lord? <laughs> did the guy sin? Did she sin? You know, whose fault is it? It is human fallen nature, human flesh that always wants to find out who did it. Whose fault is it? You know, uh, we see funny videos sometimes on social media with dogs and, you know, the owner comes home from work and some kind of disaster happened in the house. A vase had been knocked over or, 
you know, a pillow was eaten, right? Or, <laughs> or uh, the food was removed from the counter, but somebody did it. So I've even, you know, I've had to, to babysit a huge dog before. And by the time I came home from um, grocery shopping, this was in Tulsa, Oklahoma, he had eaten the entire garage door. It, he was huge. And I, I didn't understand it. But you know what? These, these owners of these dogs, especially when there's several dogs, they'll say, who did it? And the two innocent parties will always look at the guilty party. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> it's so super funny. But even dogs do it. Right. Children always do it. Like if something happens, then they say, I didn't do it. He did it. Johnny did it. Right. Or sissy did it. Brother did it. And so when our little uh, when our daughter was little, she was about 11 months. She was an early talker. And uh, whenever she, the boys had done something, she would she would call me mom. She only ever called me mom. <laughs> Never mama. <laughs> mom, boys pink you know she would tell me you need to go up there and give them a spank <laughs> and so i didn't even know what they had done right probably told her to stay downstairs but uh we do this to ourselves as well so you know oftentimes uh human nature will say well you deserved you know what what came to you you deserved the this illness or disease, you know, you've done something to open the door, right? I've had bad traumatic things happen to me before. And then some of my leaders were like, did you open a door? What's the open door? Whose fault is it? And I had such a revelation today because our, our, this month we are applying the blood of Jesus to our homes, our children, uh, we apply the blood of Jesus to our possessions, to our bodies that God has given us. And the revelation I had today was that when the angel of death went around, that angel of death didn't care about who was behind the door, if they deserved death or not. The angel of the Lord only looked at the sacrifice that was on the door. And so that's an amazing thing because, of course, when we think about Passover, uh, the Lord did something that was very intense emotionally. Because uh, when you think about a little lamb, the lamb is so innocent and it's super cute, right? It's wooly, uh, it's got a cute face, and it's cuddly. You see them always cuddling with the farmer, leaning in. And, you know, they're just babies. They're still nursing with their mom, little lambs, they're innocent. And here God says, you have to uh, kill it and drain its blood from its little body, right, into a cistern, and then take hyssop and smack it against the doorposts, right, the, the top and the sides of it. And, and this was a very intense, emotionally intense activity when you think about it, you know, most of us have not ever killed an animal and drained it from, you know, its blood. We, I mean, that would be such a horrible thing to have to do. You know, there's some farmers that have to do it all the time. You know, um, I've worked in a chicken factory before, but I just put the frozen pieces as a teenager in a package. That's all I did. I didn't have to be in that horrible section at the front of the of the factory where the live chickens come in and where they hang them upside down and cut their throats. Right. I don't have to do those things. So here you have these families and whether they were, you know, liars, whether they were cheaters, whether they, whatever their condition was, even no matter how good they were, it didn't matter. That angel of death was going to kill the, the oldest in the whole land, the oldest son in the whole land of Egypt, whether they were Jew or whether they were Egyptians. Every oldest child was going to die unless they had to sacrifice on the door. And this is a picture of Jesus, so innocent, like a lamb, never harmed one person ever in all eternity, never, ever harmed anyone. 
He had not sinned against God ever. He passed every test, did everything his father wanted him to do. And that was the perfect sacrifice, just like the little lamb was completely perfect, had no blemish on it. It was just awesome. That was the blood that the angel of death had to recognize and pass over. And so I want you to know that when it comes to your questions about whether or not you can have a breakthrough, a healing, a miracle, it doesn't have to do with anything uh, else, but your faith in the fact that all it takes is the sacrifice of Jesus. And because it was good, the sacrifice was good. And because the father accepted the sacrifice, because the blood was pure blood uh, and that takes away the sin of the whole world, the reason for all the sins behind the doors, come on, all the sins and the faults that was behind the door of those homes in Egypt were covered by the blood. It's the same with Jesus. When you receive Jesus and you receive his sacrifice and believe in Jesus, then, then, the, then the miracle is yours. And so I want us to answer all these questions that our flesh brings up, you know, our human nature, just like a doggy, just like children, we still have not lost that reason in our brain. Our brain wants to always look for solutions. So that when something goes wrong, our brain is trying to find fault, which is a, a great thing if it's used properly because it avoids future mistakes, right? So you don't keep falling off of a cliff over and over. But at the same time, uh, you may not do the same thing again, but the devil wants to use that to disqualify you from your miracle. The devil wants to, even if, if you eventually draw the right conclusion, uh, you know, I didn't mean to do it or whatever, it still distracts from the one who is the only key to your miracle, right? And so we want to take our eyes off of the what is behind the door, and we want to put our eyes on what's on the door. Isn't that such a simple but wonderful revelation? And, and if you can just put your trust on what's on the door, yeah. then, then the miracle happens where the punishment for sin is removed. Come on, it has to pass by. And, and we've taught on this many times. Some people get very upset because they translate it again into guilt. <laughs> so when we say that all sickness is punishment for sin, people get very offended because they're like, what, you're calling me a dirty sinner because now I have a growth, you know, on my ear or whatever. No, but understand that it doesn't really matter whether you sinned, come on. It doesn't matter if your parents sinned, just like what happens was he the was he blind he was born blind the one who was healed mm -hmm. and the people said who did it who 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 done it <laughs> what did he sin or his parents and and jesus said it doesn't have anything to do with whether he sinned or his parents neither but that the works of god may be glorified and sometimes you know i thought about that passage and i didn't get it but now i really get it it has to do with it's not what's behind the door, it's what's on the door. And so uh, I want you to understand that sins, sickness is a punishment for sin. And that when Jesus told the layman, your sins are forgiven, it was, it was in the same breath that he said, pick up your bed and, and, and go home. So the layman was instantly healed because the solution had come and that was forgiveness of sin exactly. so understand that the blood of jesus forgives all of the sin and it's not like he's going to forgive the sin it is for all who will receive the fact that jesus blood did forgive all the sin <laughs> now some people don't want to accept that and they will die in their sin but when we, the gift has been given, it's not like Jesus every day is going to shed his blood. It's not like, oh, Johnny just decided, you know, to receive Jesus sacrifice. So Jesus get at it, cut it again. No, the blood was shed once and for all. It, the gift was given once and for all. And that is the remission of all sins. 
and the restor restoring of our relationship with God the Father because of it and freedom from sin with its punishment, which is sickness and death. So today I want you to put your trust in the Lord. We can answer every question with a high thought. And the highest thought we can have is who God is and what he has done. Okay, you know, there's so many layers that we can attack, you know, tackle of questions. And there's so many philosophers that have gone before us and that are even now in the world who, who try to ascend to the highest knowledge, you know, and they're answering one question and then that leads to another question. And then, you know, they feel like if they can just reach all the way to the universe, then they have answered all the questions. And, and it has made more men insane than anything else. But the highest, highest thoughts that we can ever have, the highest answer to every question we can ever have is God himself who he is. And, you know, I have a few more minutes. <laughs> I just want to want to just mention a few of the names of Jesus. And so uh, the, the names of God. And so when we can understand that it's not about you and me, what we have done, what we've done right or wrong, it's about our faith in who God is yes. that gives us the miracle every single time. I've shared the miracle about my kidney many times. It was the revelation of you are the one who is the very present one in time of trouble. It wasn't about, oh, my goodness, I don't deserve it. I do deserve it. None of that would have worked. Those are all filthy rags to God. But my ascent in my thought, my conclusion in the middle of trouble was, who are you? Who are you? You know, when Hannah could not conceive, finally, year after year, she came to the her mind ascended to the highest thought that she could have had. And that was, look, you are the Lord of hosts. Come on. You, you are the one who brings a breakthrough, even if you have to send an army of angels. That was a high thought. And that's when her miracle came and she had her little Samuel. So, so ascending in our thoughts is very important. Getting rid of the guilt by deciding it doesn't matter what or who's behind the door, but what's on the door and who put it there. Come on, Jesus' blood, the spotless lamb of God. And then for any other miracle, we need to ascend to the, to the knowledge of who God is. And God was so kind to reveal himself to us by giving us his names and in each one of the names i love it because it's not like he said you know my name is johnny or whatever you know some kind of you know guy name or whatever no every one of his names is a description of what he does who he is and so uh the the first one that we have learned is yahweh or or you know there's elohim uh, and so Yahweh is the self-existent one. Again, when you see that he's Yahweh, that means he's the self-existent one. That means that he had already made up his mind before, beforehand, before you and I ever did anything, before our parents ever did anything, our ancestors did anything, before Adam and Eve ever did anything. God already decided who he was. <laughs> he was the self-existing one. And we can rely on him because he doesn't ever change. He is who he is, and he's consistent all the time. He's not a respecter of persons. Um, then his name is Adonai. Adonai means he's, he's the Lord over all. You know, we get King of Kings and Lord of Lords. We say that about Jesus, his son, because Lord of all means it doesn't matter what the enemy is. It doesn't matter what the mountain is. It doesn't matter what the symptoms are. He's Lord over all of it. There's not a name that has been given in heaven and on earth uh, higher than the name that we believe in. Come on, the name of Adonai. He is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Now, he is also uh, Yahweh Rohi. Now, Yaho, ya Yahweh Rohi is the Lord is my shepherd. And that's, of course, Psalms 23, which you've been talking a lot about. And it's about, uh, you know, all these benefits of what he does as a shepherd. 
a shepherd's goal is that it goes well for his sheep, that he will feed them, he will give them water, he will give them peace from enemies and rest. And so you can understand that when we ascend in our thoughts about our troubles, our storms, you can say, you are my shepherd, you are Jehovah Rohi, and I thank you that you're leading me to quiet quiet pastures. You restore my soul. You lead me in, in paths of righteousness. You know, all these wonderful things. You, you bring me by still waters. That's such a wonderful thing because we see Jesus stilling the storm in the New Testament. And that was so, you know, Jehovah uh, Rohi. He was so the, the Prince of Peace as well. So uh, leading us as a shepherd to peace. Then we have uh, Jehovah Shama. That's one of my favorites, been the last few years, because the understanding, the ascent in my mind above circumstances is that God is already there. <laughs> hmm. So I, I don't fret about tomorrow. I don't, I don't fret about what the government is going to do next year, right? I don't fret about what is coming because he's already there. <laughs> we serve the God who's already there. So and if he's brought us through this far, he's not going to say, okay, now I'm done with you. 2021 was the last year. No, no. He is Jehovah Shama. You're already there. You're there 10 years from now. Come on. If you tarry Jesus, you are there, come on, at the rapture and after the rapture. And so he is that to us. All these things that he has revealed about himself, he's that not just to himself. He's not shepherding himself, right? He's not trying to be present with himself. He's present with you. He's present in your past. He's present in your now and he's present in your future. Wow, that is a, an amazing one. And then, of course, I'm going to end with this one. You can study the names of God. You know, you can even Google it. So many lists will come up. Uh, Yahweh Rapha, the Lord, our healer. So this is beautiful because this shows that God is fully aware that sin was going to happen. You know, and this is who he was from eternity to eternity. He was the healer before anyone needed healing. <laughs> that is amazing. That blows your mind. <laughs> that there was no problem yet of sickness and disease deficiencies and disorders and and covid or anything there was no such thing he was already jehovah rapha and that is he was our healer he is the the well the, in dutch it is the the healing master right <laughs> hail master he's the master of healing and so here we call him the great physician in america and he is amazing and he has provided healing in his name, not because we want him to and we need him to, but because it's who he already is. He loves to do it. You know, my husband tells me, maybe, you know, this is your hobby. You should maybe have a store, a nature path store, because, you know, every herb, every mineral, every vitamin, I love studying these things because... It just blows my mind how God has put everything in nature to make us healthy and whole. Uh, you know, it's a really amazing how, how he's put things in nature that corrects dysfunction in our bodies. It's just so intriguing. And of course, it's one of the gifts God has, has placed on my life is healing. And so I'm intrigued by every form of healing. It's, the, it's my favorite topic. I love to study it. Uh, but I can't give myself too far to it because then I would just go only natural. There's times when I have such a revelation of an herb that God has to go, listen, you're going to be depending on that now. And that's going to harm your faith. So so just put that away. <laughs> Forget about it. Don't take it. I have to tell myself not to take it for a month just so that I don't put my trust in that herb because it's such a powerful herb. Come on. I put my trust in Jehovah. Rafa, he is my healer. Now, sometimes he will tell us to do things to participate in the miracle. And, you know, in our uh, Zoom healing rooms, sometimes one of our ministers will hear from the Lord that, you know, there's an obstacle, uh, some kind of conclusion maybe that you drew or an unforgiveness 
from a hurt. Maybe you have to forgive yourself. You've been blaming yourself for stuff. You know, I had to do that myself. I had so abused sugar my whole childhood and youth that I had caused some major damage to my body. And the, the blame of that was what the devil was using all the time to hinder my miracle because I, I would ask the Lord for mercy and forgiveness all the time for doing that to myself, right? Instead of just focusing on what he had done. And so, work. yeah. And so we want to not be hung up uh, on so much what we, we have done or what we need to do. But sometimes there is a key that the Lord says, now participate with me and, and forgive that person. Come on, forgive that person. Let them go because that is a foothold that the devil wants to use, right? God wants to destroy your enemies and he doesn't want your enemy, the enemy of your soul to have any kind of open door. And so trust him that because he's such a great physician, uh, you know, great physicians work with us and it takes our participation. It takes our, partici our participation in reading his word, speaking his word, uh, trusting his instructions, uh, stopping destructive behavior. We can pray for everyone to be healed from alcoholism, but if you don't stop buying more alcohol, then then the, that miracle is not going to stick, right? That, that problem is going to keep coming around and the Lord would have to do a miracle for your liver and your brain shrinkage every single day. <laughs> Come on now. We, we want to participate with the Lord. So we want you to know that God is a miracle for you because he's good. And we put our trust in him, not, not blame ourselves. Just give all that to Jesus. He forgives our sins. We, we repent of it and we're not going back to that same behavior. Amen. We want to be good stewards over our bodies, over our relationships, over our finances. Um, and so that requires that we participate with our great physician, Jehovah Rapha. Amen. So that's a few conclusions <laughs> that the Lord ministered to me about today. And so I wanted to share that with you. I'm really excited. It's really fun. The, um, you know, the, the names of God are all very powerful. Yeah. Uh, we, we, I mean, because they're, they're, they can be seen as identification, you know, names are identifiers, mm -hmm. names are uh, the, in the name of someone is, is, is distribution of power. Yeah. Um, you, you, you have, I mean, there's so much that's active in a name, in a name, yeah. and he gives you his name, gave us his name for at least, you know, those two things. Um, and then, you know, talking about the door, what's on, what's behind the door. Right. You know, today is this week is Rosh Hashanah, right? So we're yes. in, we're in a new year. Yes. New year, which is you know it's a door. Yeah. A, a new year is going from one. That's good. To another, it's a crossover. The, re, the I think it's interesting because it's most people don't participate with the door because they are thinking about rooms. Yes. Right. Jesus is the door, though. He doesn't think oh, about rooms. He right. thinks. I love that you're saying that. You know, don't think about the room you're in or what's happening in the room. Yes. Think about what's going on in the door. Wow. What's what's at the door? And Jesus is the door. He's so he interacts with doors. He interacts with with. He knows what's on the room, the other room. But what you're saying is, don't focus what's happening in the room. No. Focus at what happened at the door because the door, whatever you cross into, or whether whatever happens at the door allows you to cross in and out and do whatever gates of hell should not prevail, yes. right? That's all about what you're crossing over. This is a new year. Yes. A lot of people won't cross into a new year uh, differently, feeling differently, thinking differently because of what happened last year, Yes. right? So you're still in that room. But if this is a new year, the blood of Jesus has washed that door, you cross through the blood, that which happened in the last season or that which was in the last season yes. has to be left in that season because you cross through the blood, yeah. the blood washes it completely. Those enemies cannot <laughs> touch us it's anymore. Like, and what's really interesting as a Christian, we're not taught anything about the doors. We're not taught right. really about doors. But as a Jew, when you walk in, you have to touch the, I forget the name of this. Yeah. I, I just had it a second. It's right on the tip of my tongue. But you have to touch it and pray. Yeah. You have to, when you walk in, enter into a room. Now you're not, you're, you're not thinking about the room. You're thinking about the blessings of this house 
as you go through the door, as yes. you're happening, as it's happening at this door. So if you think about, if you're really thinking about mezuzah, yes, <laughs> I'm the mezuzah. Uh, when, when you think about, when you think about walking through the door, Jesus is the door, you touch it, you know, it, all the promises, all the blessings, all his name, everything's yeah. in that door. And so whatever I'm going to participate in this room has to first come with me through the door. Yeah. I don't walk into the door with my day on or my problems or my challenges, I walk through the door with now the blessing on. It yeah, shifts everything. That's the big deal. So whatever you walk in the door. So if you're dealing with something, you know, in the in you have condemnation, you have shame, you have guilt. I love what the scripture says, enter into his gates with Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. praise. So there is there is a time where Smith Wigglesworth was in a service. And he's like, this service is totally not going the right direction. Yeah, this is terrible. This service is totally not right. I want you guys, everyone, get up now and go back out the door. Yes. And you out. come back in here with Thanksgiving and praise. So yes. you can actually start your day that way. You can start a moment that way. If you felt you felt like you failed this today, you can go back out through the door and yep. come back concentrating on the door, not concentrating on what's happening wow. in your rooms right? The room, the, the room you're leaving or the room you're going into, just go back and look at the door. Think about the door. What has Jesus done? What has he done that's bringing change? What has he done that's cor corrected all of this? What's the blessings on my life? What's the blessings on my family? What I mean, yes. listen, I'm doing this right now in my mind. What has, what, the, Lord what, done? What has the Lord done? What does yes. the Lord say about this? That's what my mezuzah, my mezuzah, my mezuzah, mezuzah is, yes. right? I'm going to touch and handle and deal with all of the promises of God that are on my family, my life, as I walk through the door. Now, as I enter into the door, Jesus is the door. Yeah. Everything that happens after I get through that door is really reliant on him. Yeah. It's not reliant on me. That's what you're saying. Yes, it's really yes. powerful. Because there's no winning otherwise. No, there's no winning and otherwise. And the Lord doesn't expect us to. And the biggest challenge, though, is we don't focus on doors. We walk through doors. Yes. We don't. I'm going through my next door. I'm going to my next level. We're all about the next door, the next level. The door is just a way to there. But Jesus is the door. So you have to focus on him. So you have to focus on the doorway. You have to focus on that. Jesus is the door. So we don't actually think, think about doors. We don't actually think about those things. That's powerful we, because it determines what's behind it. It determines what's behind which it. Which door? <laughs> yeah, it's like, which door you pick? Well, Price is right. That right. one right there, the pretty one. But the, it's the ugly one, right? It's that whatever. That's a can it's, of beans. You, got, you have to, so we don't actually, we're not actually trained wow. like, a, like a Jewish believer to right. focus on the door. So when we hear, you know, the, the Jesus saying, I'm the door or we hear anything to talk about the door, we actually never relate to it properly because we are actually always in a room. And whatever's right. in that room is settled in us. Right. It's settled in our we, hearts, it's settled in our minds. We don't, we, we're now going to meditate on that. We're going to think on that. So if you've been in the room of sickness, if you've been in the room yeah. and, and you've made your bed there, right? That's why you take up your bed and walk, yeah. go somewhere else, get out of this get environment, out of this. right? If you've been, if you made your bed in these places, if you made your bed in, in whatever circumstance, the, you've made your bed in a room. And so you've got to come out of that room and you've got to look at the circumstance differently by yes. how you look through the door, you look at the door. So wow. yes. I think it's very interesting. And so what we have is a lot of people don't know how to participate with Jesus because Jesus is always at the door. He's knocking at the door. He's always at the door. And we want him to be in our circumstance. But I don't think Jesus is, wants to sit in our circumstance. Because he's busy with he, something else. He did it once. <laughs> he died on the cross for us, took on that position, became the perfect intercessor. Mm -hmm. And now everything else is getting us back to that doorway. Like when, Mo, when uh, like what, you know, God said to you with, about your kidneys. Yes. Okay. Why are you here? Yeah. Why are you here? You're in a what cave. You, you, yeah. You're like Elijah. Yeah. Uh, or Eli Elijah. Yeah. I think it was Elijah that was in the cave and he was worried and concerned. And, yeah. and God says, come out of the cave. And so he had to come to the mouth of the cave to get his breakthrough. Yes. God dealt with him in the cave, but he didn't tell him how his breakthrough was coming while the he was Lord deep in the in cave. The cave. <laughs> he, he came out to the, to the, to the, to the mouth of the cave. And that's where, the where Lord was, right? that's where the Lord was. He, yeah. he wasn't in the, wasn't in the wind. He wasn't in the fire. He wasn't, but it was in the still small voice, but that's at the cave right so you have to get to this place where god wants you to come away from the circumstance in your heart yeah. and your mind participation with him is coming out of it 
coming yeah. out of the cave. And the caves are always represent biblically, always represent strongholds. So come yeah. out of your stronghold. Come out of what you think things should be. Come out of, well, I've lived in this. I've always been sick. I've had these, the same thing. Someone's been dealing with pallets. They constantly come back. Well, we rebuke that. The, the, now, when we rebuke it, we're talking about what's happening at the door, the mezuzah, right? We're mm -hmm. talking about the blessings. You got to come to the door of your breakthrough. Yeah. Get away from that. Get out of your, get out of the bed and come away to the door of your breakthrough. Rise I know, up. well, yeah. I always have pallets. These pallets are always coming. And, and so, but I know that's the fact, that's the truth. But as more you, you stay in that, that room, the Bible says a, a, hope deferred makes the heart sick yeah so hope deferred makes the heart sick so deferred hope that word deferred literally means to drag off it's your your it's to take something with and drag it off dragging off your hope yeah. you're deferring your hope you're putting it on something else you're putting it, it's being directed somewhere else so you have to get your hope to the door you have to get up out of this so when when you know Jezebel is coming after after Elisha, Elijah, I'm, I'm getting maybe getting my, my prophets there. Yeah, um, Elijah. Yeah. Elijah. And and he is he is at the Terabith tree, which is uh, the juniper tree, which is the tree of the oppression and depression and discouragement. He's at that tree and he lays there and he says, oh, I'm going to die. I'm just this hope. His heart is deferred. He's mm -hmm. deferred his hope. He has no more hope in what's going to happen tomorrow. He has no more hope in what could happen to, you know, whether or not he can be delivered from this. It's in his mind. He's already played this thing out. Jezebel is going to track me down. I've seen her kill so many others. Yeah. And so he lays down at a tree of hopelessness and he can he just takes on that deferred place a deferred yeah, thing no so so he's he's at that hopeless but the angels angel lord that comes to him says listen you've got to come off of the bed that you've made and and drink and eat well he drank and mm -hmm. ate didn't get back up went back to, he comes and kicks him again says hey get up drink and eat now arise so you have to get up you have to choose to come out so you have to choose in your mind even though it's taken me 10 years I'm getting out of this sickness. Yeah. Even though it's taken me five months, I'm getting out of this sickness. I'm climbing out of this. I'm going to come out of the cave. I'm going to come out of the room and I'm going to meet Jesus at the door. Yes. I'm going to meet him at the door because at the door is where he wants That's to meet me. He, That's how you participate. You participate with, I want to, I'm going to get up and I'm going to come to the place where Jesus is. Jesus is not in the room with you. Jesus is at the door yeah. knocking. And he's saying, I'll come in, but you've got to come, oh, you've got to come and open. Mm -hmm. And so you come and open. And then when I come in, I'm going to come in and I'm going to sup with you. Mm -hmm. We're going to now eat something that's going to get us up. We're going to actually Table now, we're going to actually Ooh. get up out of this. And so very powerful picture that you're creating here is that we have to, we, we don't focus on where, what's in the room, yes. focus on, on what's at the door or who's yes. at the door yes. or what's on the door, yes. because the door is not something you do. It's something that's already been done. It's yes. doors, doors are already made. You don't, if you have to make a door before you get into a room, <laughs> that's a complicated situation. <laughs> I love the fact that the doors are already made. I just go and turn the knob yes. and the knob is my decision. I can stand at the door and go, why don't you open? Yeah. The, you, have to, you, have like to, you have to participate with it. You have to turn the knob with expectation. No one ever turns a knob of a door uh, if they know it's locked. They yeah. immediately knock. Yeah. But with expectation, you turn it. That means yeah. your hope is coming back. When your hope, expectation and hope are the same word. So when you turn the knob, when you go to the door, that's hope. That's expectation. The Bible says hope deferred makes the heart sick. That sick heart uh, off, it, yeah. it, it's, it's a put off, but that sickness is it's disease. It's, it's in, it's, it's fearful. It's unbelieving. It's doubtful. Yeah. God will do it for someone else, but I don't know if he'll do it for me. When you can, when you can climb out of that, and this is the difficult part because we're waiting for Jesus to pull us out of that, yeah. but you've got to climb out of that. Well, what do you mean? I've got to climb out. Well, the scripture is very clear. Hope deferred makes the heart sick, but when desire returns, it will be a tree of life. Now, desire is not controlled by God. Desire is controlled by you. Yeah, you have to bring desire back. Now, this is what I notice that happens when people who are dealing with sickness, and if that sickness keeps repetitively coming, 
over and over and over, then you've got to bring desire back. You've got to say, I'm going to continue to believe. Now, this is where most people do. They, they live with their symptoms until desire is gone. Desire to be healed is gone. Well, yeah, I have diabetes. Now. And now, you know what? I, when I first, it. when I first, when I first was diagnosed with diabetes, I, I don't actually have diabetes. I want yeah. you to know. So don't start saying, well, we're going to pray for you. This is an example. Um, but a person says, I, you know, they die. I have diabetes. When I first was diagnosed with diabetes, I, I tried to contend against it. I prayed, but it didn't happen. So then you slowly dial back into making it a bed, make a bed there. And then it becomes your 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 sick bed, the place that you're going to be, the place that you're going to have to fill, fulfill your time. You say, yeah, I want to get healed, but you aren't going to the door. And so the expectation goes away. Uh, anticipation goes away. And then most of all, the word desire, the word desire goes away. That desire, uh, that longing in one's heart, longing to be healed. I pray for people. Um, who are in wheelchairs. They wanted to be free years ago, but now they, they say, well, I've just accepted where it is and just pray for me to, to be happy or whatever it is. And, yeah. I'm, and that, that desire, um, that desire goes away. And in, that, in, in order for them to get healed, the desire to be healed has to come back. Yeah. Not just the hope to be healed comes back, but the desire. There's a difference. Expectation is hope. I expect to be healed. Well, when you when your expectation is dashed and dashed and dashed and dashed for whatever reason, mm -hmm. then you have to come back to I really, really, really long. This is the word I des I desire, wish I long in one's heart. Yeah. And this is a great word that I want to put in there. It's the it's the word I I have an appetite. It's a craving. Yes. It's an appetite. It's a insa in, in, insatiable wow. desire. I have an appetite for my healing. That, that means it belongs to you. You don't have an appetite for things that shouldn't be inside of you. Yeah, and your, your very being yeah. should be, your nature should be calling for it, yes. yearning for it, Yeah. right? And so, you know, when, when, he, when the angel said, hey, you have to eat and you have to drink you know, because the, and get up because the journey is too much for you, yeah. meaning you don't have a desire for this journey. Yeah. You have no craving for this journey. You this is have you have no takes. appetite for this journey. You don't have the appetite big enough to get there. So spend the time reading, spend the time studying, right? Read, read and drink. I mean, eat and drink, right? Eat the cakes yeah. and drink. So get in the presence of the Lord. Eat until you can and, and study. Someone says, well, I don't have an appetite for this. I say, well, how much are you studying healings? I said, yeah. This was a real question someone yeah. asked me. I said, how much, I mean, say, how much are you actually studying healing? That's well, right. I've read this book and read, no, I said, no, not that. Because if you don't have enough appetite to actually study the word, to eat it of your own, to dig in there, get, get inspired by what we teach on Wednesday, on Tuesdays, and then spend the week digesting that alone. And yes, then, then, more. then let it ramp off into rabbit trails. When you, you know, you're actually having an appetite for it when you go past what was taught. Yeah. It goes, it takes you in a realm of, man, I didn't see that before, never saw that before. Oh, and then you start to get on this realm. And, and, and what we started teaching or what you heard from someone else is still there for you to come back. But you're going to go on this appetite, this rabbit. I think rabbit trails aren't because they just choose to run. But if we have rabbits in our backyard and they just eat and what how they eat, they're oh, just like whatever is next. And they did. They just are looking for the next place to eat. And I think if you go on a rabbit trail, <laughs> you're just looking. Oh, that looks delicious. Oh, that looks delicious. And you go for one. And then that's going to build your appetite for mm. the completion of what you what you put off or what you allowed to be drug away from you. Yeah. So, so participate by going, well, I know Jesus wants me to come to the door and receive my miracle of mm -hmm. finances. So I'm not just going to go over and go, please, Jesus, you know, I need to feed my kids, please, Lord, you know, I need to, that's and not, he, he doesn't, he, he's moved by authority, not by pity. He's done? moved by compassion, yeah. but compassion and pity are completely different. And sometimes we want him to move with a realm of pity yeah. And he knows that we have the ability to do more Then he doesn't actually step into compassion. Compassion is when he knows you've hit your wall. You've tried everything. You've done everything. So the widow woman, 
uh, or the woman who had the issue of blood. She's tried everything. She's crawling through. I mean, she's touching the Lord. She's pulling on him by faith. faith. That's authority, right? That's authority. Then there's another person he sees and the Lord says he had compassion on them. They have hit their wall and they don't even know how to pull on another level of faith. So he, so then he has compassion on them. So you have to know that, that in the middle ground is called playing. It's, a play. <laughs> it's, 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 it's not, it's not, it's not, I'm at my wits end right. and I need you so badly, God help. And it's right. not, I have authority because I am so full of appetite to be healed. You know, that's what you need to be in one of those two places. He does not get moved by feeling sorry for us. I, yeah. I, I've tried it. That doesn't work. I've done it so many times <laughs> and it's, he's never, I'm even now doing it this week. It. I'm even seriously, I'm like, Lord, please have mercy. You know, this is, and I think there are some things for his namesake that I can pull on, yeah. but he's like, mm, you're manipulating me. I know what you're trying <laughs> to do. You're not going to do it. You're faking. It's not authority and it's not compassion. You got something else going on. You need to deal with it. Get off that bed of sorrow and sickness and sadness and self-pity, right? Because that's what happens when you stay in that deferred hope place. Yeah. You feel self-pitiful. It's like, like sometimes I pray for people and they really want to get healed, but they've, they've been in that bed of self-pity so long yeah. that I can't even get them to a place of expectation. No, for they're 30 like, minutes, they'll like tell us how mm-hmm. sad. Sorry and their eye, you know, the eyebrow goes like this. And the mouth. I'm like, there's nothing I can do That's for you. That's not a high thought. I can't even, and, and you know, I really, I really should, instead of just, you know, going, I should go, you know what, when you get past yourself, pity, come back. Right. Cause William come Branham, William Branham would do that. I mean, William Branham, these guys that walked in Masters absolute authority, oh. they, they didn't mess around with no. the, the kind of let's help people along. And of course, yeah. I, we, we, we've <laughs> probably learned a few things since then, but I think, I wonder if it actually messes up the authority a little bit. That's right. And I, so I just want to encourage you. This is a great word. Get to the door because the door is where the miracle happens. Yes. And if you can get to the door, that means you've worked through a lot of stuff to come out of your bed, come out of your sorry, come out of your sorrow, come out of your pity, come out of your sadness, yeah. come out of your deferred. Those blaming. are all things that are def- yeah. blaming. That's all deferred heart sickness stuff. Yeah. And and yet when you start to walk closer to the door and think, well, man, I never felt this strong before. I, this just feels strong. I'm getting my expectation back. Mm-hmm. Woo! And then you get that. And the next thing, the expectation is returning. Your appetite for it has come back. Man, I'm telling yeah. you, when that appetite comes back, God's looking to see, are you hungry? So I like to serve those who are hungry. I, I, could, right. I can cook, cook up some stuff. But if like you're not, child. if you don't have an appetite, if you're not hungry, whoo, it's very difficult. It's difficult, right? I, I remember those days of saying to my mm-hmm. mom, you, well, you know, these Brussels sprouts, I don't, I don't know. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to eat it. And I sat there. I sat there for hours. I wasted so much time you and at the, the table, same. sat there and just like, well, so why, don't you send them, why don't you send them to the kids in Africa then? <laughs> if they can, because you always say they're starving kids, starving kids in Africa. Well, yeah. why don't you pack it? Let's just get a, and pack this up. Little snotty nose, little brat. Let's pack this up and, and send this over to Africa. And it's smack. It's like, okay. <laughs> I realized that that didn't work. And then so just sit and then still sat there and sat there and sat there hours. So stubborn. I did the same thing. My mom would let me sit there till 11 at night with my vegetables. So bad. Oh, my word. Stubborn little. But those parents. I'm going to go back and spank my own butt. Stop. Those parents knew something. Knew you could have been watching Happy Days. You're sitting here. And you like Brussels sprouts now. I love Brussels sprouts. And the thing is, a little garlic parents a little didn't mess around oil. in those days because they knew they were breaking a pattern of self pity. Yeah, they would just sit there. So just sit there then. <laughs> but yeah, it's focus on self that gets gets the miracle flushed down the drain. We can't do it. Yes. You gotta look up at the door. And you have to look. You have to get. You have to look up, and you have to get up. And if you don't feel it yet, if you don't feel that. That's what you have to get to that appetite place, the yeah. place of uh, getting, it says, once your appetite is returned, it's going to be a tree of life Wow! that once your appetite returns, God's going to, you're going to see, oh, this is the tree of life. I can eat of this fruit now. It's like, that's amazing. Then that's you're going to be able to eat key, of this. Babe. You're going to eat this. I, I have an yeah. appetite back. Now I can see the right tree to eat. And Jesus did that. He, he didn't just heal everybody. He didn't actually seek sick people out. 
Uh, but it says in the Bible that he healed all those who came to him. Yes. And then even when they came to him, he said, what do you want me to do for you? Yes. And so he activated their desire. I never saw that until you just said that. It, you have to have the hope and the faith working together and come to Jesus, come to the door, come to the blood of the lamb on the door and look away from everything else. Look away from blame, self-pity, look to him and then tell him what it is that you want because he's got it nobody else has it he's got it and he's saying what is it that you want you and want. everyone who comes to him he heals that's, that's right. amazing isn't it and and so you you have the privilege of participating yeah that word's been i've been last night i went to bed writing on it and i oh, wow. and i just on participation that wow and it was interesting because it's from the scripture i've been meditating on i just am, i'm just <laughs> i'm writing this it's i'm writing a book that's probably the most challenging book for me to write but the most exciting because when i thought i knew what i was writing about I'm learning so much in the process. Yeah. And it's so searching. it's taking me so long because there's new thoughts. I'm getting addressed with new thoughts the whole time. Mm -hmm. And so the scripture in John 14, where he says, you know, if you, uh, if you love me and keep my, my, keep my word and uh, then, then my father will love you. And then we will come and we will manifest ourselves to you. Mm -hmm. um and you know then then and then judas judas says um uh not as scary to think it says judas says how is that going to happen that you're going to manifest yourself to us but not to the world and i thought to myself <laughs> okay i need to think this out lord i know i have a pat answer but i need to actually know what this is and so i said how is this happening and the lord says i i'm going to reveal myself to you by making you participate with me wow and and cuz he says he says this and, he, and jesus says um i don't have all of this in this book cuz i'm meditating on it now i don't have it all completely locked in but he says basically he says we're going to my father and i we're going to come if you love us and you do all this and you keep the word and you, which you create a right habitation, right place, right place for us. We're going to come and live in you and make you our house. I thought that, <laughs> that is completely, complete different manifestation yeah. than just, I mean, then that means everything that you do is going to come from within me. And now I participate as someone who is actually, you know, I, I'm, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, I'm a RPG. I'm the, what is it? it a, you know, a, a reality. I'm 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 a one person. You you everything's coming through my eyes. You're not yeah. watching. I'm not watching it. And now I'm doing it because normally we want to have everything being observational. I want to yeah. go to a service and see a miracle. But he says oh, that's yeah. not how you know me. Is you go and see a miracle. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to put myself in you, make you my habitation. And then I'm going to cause you to put your hands on people. And then I'm going to move through you and through your hands. And you're going to know me. Yes. And I realized in writing that I know God in ways that I would have never known him if I didn't have to pray for certain people. I've had to pray for people. And in it, I'm breaking and crying. And I'm like, mm. just so overwhelmed with the intensity of God's love for them. Yeah. And I realized walking away from that, how much you love God. Now, I wouldn't have ever loved them that way, but I'm able to love them that way because God came and filled me up and I became his home. I became his house and he worked through me and it literally shifted my participation. Mm -hmm. Now I'm not participating because I know what the scripture says about it, or be, but I'm participating because God let me borrow his compassion. Yes. He let me borrow his emotion, his expectation. When the gift of faith comes on me, when I'm, when I'm seeing people's, people's lives change and I mean, dramatic things are taking place. Amazing. Last a couple of weeks ago, I'm at a service and and God just starts to tell this person all their stuff in their life. And it's like the, you know, just goes through this whole thing from the sun to the, everything is laid out. I mean, just laid out, just tells details. And I'm thinking, <laughs> it's like, I'm living in this person's house yeah, is because he lives in their house and yeah. he came and live inside of me. And so guess what? I can see, I can see into their house yes. because my eyes are no longer. My, now that's a different level of participation. Yeah. That's a different. Now that it's means that he's going to manifest himself to me in a way that the world, because the world all has observation. 
The world can see Jesus. They can see him moving. They can see him. Doing, they're all observing the same way. Yes. So it doesn't mean he's revealing himself differently through hiding their eyes from seeing him. Mm-hmm. It's only through doing things through us that we get to see him in a light that no one else gets to see. That's right. And that is a power of our participation. Now, this yeah. is where it digs back into the, the hope deferred. The reason the devil wants you to stay sick and keep your hope off is because you're so you, you believe for your healing so much that it's hard for you to participate with someone else's healing. It's there's a lot of people that say, well, I can't go pray for the sick because I'm dealing with my own stuff. Wow. So you are missing the, the power of having a manifest revelation of Jesus through you. That's a big repercussion, isn't right? it? Right. Because you want him to come to you. And that's great. We all should be healed. We should live in that healing health. But the enemy loves to cause you to have a deferred heart, a sick yeah. heart in it, because he knows it prolongs you in ministry wow. of two people and in manifestation of God. That's right. Oh, my goodness. That's right. It has much bigger ramifications. Well, one one door or another, right? You Either you stay behind the door, you will be unfruitful because you have no more hope for yourself. You go and look up. And what the door looks like, who the door is, what's on the door, and that affects multitudes well, and, of people. And imagine, because each yourself. each person who put the door, the blood on the door was yep. the family. It was them. Yeah, it, they Jesus, have to do God it. didn't the come and do it. The father did it. Right. So this is the Whoever participation. Was in charge of the house. So can you imagine now you're no longer the one that's struggling with cancer, struggling with diabetes or pallops. Now you walk around with a brush with 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 blood on it yep. and you're just looking for someone's doorway you can come and get them to come to the door that's it's amazing like you just now now you've changed your position now you're not in the house waiting for a breakthrough now you're moving around the whole world and looking at homes looking at lives and you yes. can put the blood of jesus on them that's this month right well, put the blood will. of jesus on our families and as we see the breakthrough this month in our families or on our finances or whatever it is we're going to all grab our own buckets of blood. That sounds weird, <laughs> but we're going to grab our buckets of blood and we're going to go and hiss up and hiss up. And we're going to go and hit some of these doors of people's lives. Yes. And that's going to cause the greatest move of revival is that I'm living in revival. Yes. I am revival. Yes. And now I can give revival because revived. of where I live. Yes. So, but if I'm constantly struggling with my heart, do I have an affection for the kingdom of God? I don't know if I believe that. And you know how I many people that I'm actually encountering that say, you don't, I don't know if I believe that way anymore. Yeah. I don't want, I don't know if Multitudes I believe that way anymore. The and the fact is, is I look at them and they're telling me all of these great deep revelations that they have based upon a podcast that they heard. But the revelation to me is, Ooh, you lost your first love. Yeah. You lost your first you. love. You lost your affections. Your appetite has gone to something else because your affections have been deferred. You've changed your, your expectation and you've allowed, and I've seen it. It's contagious. Don't, don't sit around with people to talk. No. That, and you, I know you're thinking you're helping them. Oh, I'm going to try to talk no, them out of it. It's don't, a spirit. don't, don't do it. Not unless this you have is. authority to cast the spirit out. Yeah. It, don't, don't even try to, I, there's points where I'm like, okay, I'm done. I'm, I have no more talking. I can't yeah. do any more conversation with yeah. you because I know it's just about an argumentative spirit yeah. that this age is all about. Yeah. Think about it. Some mocking spirit, complete mocking spirit. Yeah. And you have to address the mocking spirit. There's something that happened yeah. last week to us. And I'm like, that's, 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 how does that happen, God? We just said for not in, 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 it's a mocking spirit and we have to address it. We have to deal with it. Right. And so that spirit of mockery, you have to address that thing. You have to handle it in the spirit, but you have to recognize it. And if you don't recognize it, you'll never, you'll never handle it. That's so right. I want you to, to, to have in your, and don't feel like, well, I really feel like I want to help them. You do want to help them, but your arguing with them is not helping them. No. And you have to realize the Bible talks about casting pearls before swine. Yeah. And, you know, and it sounds, it sounds mean, but I said, you know, I am not doing that anymore. I'm not trying to convince anybody. They can come to me if they're really, really uniquely uh, humble searching. and searching mm-hmm. and they have questions. That's fine. Seekers but but you can always hear in the question a little snide a little snide, you know, kind of under undertone that you have to be a sensitive to undertone and go, you know what? I appreciate where you are right now. And I'm going to pray for you, but I'm not going to waste my time here because all of that time 
And I've watched people who spent a lot of time trying to convince someone who had that spirit and that spirit jumped on them. That's and right. now they're dealing with that spirit. And I'm that's, like, yeah, gosh, because that's how the devil works. He has arguments. Right. And so when you argue with people, you're on his field. Jesus did, didn't argue. He said he cast down he, arguments. Yeah, cast down arguments in every high and lofty thing that exalts itself above what? The knowledge of God. And that's what we need to think about and, and understand that we can ascend to our highest thoughts, and that is the knowledge of God. And uh, that's what we want to focus on, what he has done and who we are in him. And wow, what an amazing thing on this very important day of New Year's. Crossing over. Crossing over. It has been 5,782 years since God created Adam. So that was today. God created Adam today, those many thousands of years ago, 5,782 years. So that's very exciting. That is the beginning of humanity and God's blessing. He blessed us. He said, be fruitful, multiply, subdue, and have dominion. And so that's what we're all about. Put your eyes on Jesus. So let us know um, anything that we uh, can apply the blood of Jesus on. Come on. Jesus is the healer. And we want to pray for you, uh, a corporate prayer, that if you have any symptoms in your body that you want to get rid of now, you understand that Jesus was Jehovah Rapha, before there was ever, ever, ever any sickness, any sickness or disease or disorder, Jesus' blood, his stripes already have paid for them. And I want to I want to encourage you just as we're waiting to mm -hmm. see if there's anyone come through. I'm going to be doing a lab with uh, Jeremy Nelson in a few weeks. Yeah. And it's going to be signs, and wonders and miracles lab, which I'm going to unveil some of this stuff that I'm getting from the Lord on operating in the signs wonders and miracles and yes. stuff that i've never taught i kind of let things slip out like i do today but i'm getting i'm getting such a i'm getting i'm going to bible school with the holy spirit every night Downloads. and i'm just it's like i'm like i just want to i can't even it's, it's you know you get some stuff and it's like you can't even share it because it's like i don't really even know how to say it i yeah. stutter across it and so uh <laughs> it's quite exciting to be in school with the holy spirit Yes, he's, he's a lovely teacher just love love it he's been and teaching he me all my teaching. christian all my christian life he's been teaching me and probably before then too so um but Where that's going to be so. uh i don't actually know the i think it's the 20 maybe kim can help me put it in the calendar but you you register at elisha labs.com mm -hmm. yeah that's going to be that's going to be a fun time we also have this uh this saturday which is a free time of learning how to operate in the things of the kingdom yes. at, a, at a very, very, very massive. passive. Pa pa I, I, Sorry, I was, was going to say powerful when you see massive. <laughs> pass, so it became a passive. It's not passive at all. No. Very, very mighty, very powerful uh, display of God's kingdom. Uh, yes. And that's going to be with Tommy and, and Elizabeth, Elizabeth Odell. Odell this Saturday yes. at 11, yes. uh, 11 a.m. And, you know, you can register for that at, what is it, registration? What is it? Powerevangelism.school. Powerevangelism.school. We'll be Re posting it everywhere as and well. The, and hopefully they'll post it here. That's yeah. going to be a free hour and a half talking about how, how we're going to reach the, the world with the power of God and yes. and what's happening in the nations and 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 there's an impartation for you to become a dynamic soul winner. Yes, uh, with the, power, with power, not just words. So that that's that's going to be a free uh, free lab, yes. free gathering. And that's this exciting. Saturday. Yeah. Also, you'll be free from any fear and intimidation of how do I share? What do I share? What if people don't like it? And how can I prove that the message of the gospel is true? We'll be learning all of that from some master evangelists yes. that have reached, uh, I think it's 80 or 90 nations now. And uh, masses and masses uh, of people and miracles, every type of miracle that Jesus does. So yeah, the first time I went to Africa, I went with Tommy and it was it was quite amazing. The first night, it was kind of like a warm-up night. It wasn't the real <laughs> crusade night. 
And uh, he, he said, you know, tomorrow night we're going to be praying for people with AIDS and HIV. And, and the, you know, we had thousands of people. And I mean, I don't remember the number, but we had tens of thousands, if not more. Uh, just that first pre kind of pre rally. crusade rally. And um, they started laughing. And so he said, OK, this is what we're going to do. We're going to show you how powerful our Jesus is. I, he <laughs> says, all of the blind people come up to the stage and so they ushered you know at least nine to ten blind people to the front of the stage and he has them just all line up not just one at a time but all lined up That's and he just prays to <laughs> praise prayer in the name of jesus i command you all to see me something like that <laughs> and so then their eyes just popped open just like that just through just <laughs> one simple prayer in the name of you i command you all all you all your eyes to see me something like that and um then he went and tested each one of them and their eyes open i remember thinking Okay, this person doesn't, they still have white in their eyes. Their eyes are completely white, and yet they're able to see, see the numbers, everything. touch the nose, yes, and all of that. Miracle. So it, absolute miracles. And, you know, it was a great, powerful trip. So that's the kind of activity we're going to see. This. And then God healed AIDS. God, he, God healed he AIDS. Healed that, all sorts of issues of blood and yeah, things. Yeah, lots of miracles, wow. lots of incredible miracles. Uh, it was cripples. a powerful, powerful yeah. cripples. Uh, yeah, it's just like everything you can just imagine at that same level, Jesus and, except level. for a larger, a larger crowd. The crowds came from all over, yeah. and um, they stopped laughing because they're of, more of hungry. They stopped, they stopped laughing. Hungry. They're, that that was enough to get their appetite going, mm -hmm. and um, they came to the front. So we're going to start praying now. I want you to believe that the same Jesus that heals in Africa is the same Jesus that yes. heals here in America, yes. and that will heal online. This is what we are here. We're doing this because we believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Yes, that He is no respecter of persons, respect Thank of. You, of space or respecters of time he's not a respecter of any of those things he is going to be right there where you are mm -hmm. so we're going to move through this quickly and according to your faith just receive just say thank you jesus. and so we uh -huh. we say thank you for jesus you are the door you and we come to the all. door yeah and the blood of jesus is 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 washed all of us and we just yeah. release on your life the blood of Jesus yes. from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, over your family, over your children. Yes. And we command your wrist to be healed, hands, elbows, shoulders, um, affecting your work. We just say in the name of Jesus, uh, be healed. Yes. As Ina, yes. how you pronounce your name? We release healing be to healed. you be now healed. You're in, in, in affecting your work and your vision. Yeah. We command you to be healed. We say uh, cancer in, in, in yes. chemo. We just thank you, Father. Cancer healed. Even before chemo start, yes. let the let tumors and yes. any signs of cancer be dissolved in Lacey's body. We thank you that Lacey's healed. We release that power now. We say in the name of Jesus, let your hips and your back, Norma, be healed. Your hips and your back be healed in Jesus' name. We thank you for bruising and knots on the elbow. Be healed now. We thank you that any pain, any discomfort in that be healed in Jesus' name. We thank you that the tumor in Lacey's body is dissolving, yes. completely Dissolve. dissolving and, and, and withering away, that your arteries, your main artery will be completely freed, freed, free, free, flowing, free opening, free flowing blood, everything flowing yes. properly in your body. We thank you for Caleb's eyes. Uh, thank you, Father. Had his eye removed today and his eye is a lazy eye. Um, please pray for healing for that eye. His other eyes, he, a lazy eye. We say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. Caleb, be healed. We command that lazy eye to be healed. Yes. The, the muscles See. in the muscles be strong in your eye. That your that the muscles would be strengthened in Jesus' name. We thank you, Father, for complete thank healing and restoration. We yes. thank you for was it dystonia? Yeah. We thank you for Roxanne. We we thank you, uh, dystonia. I'm not sure what that is, but it's it throws your body. We command you to be, be healed in yes. Jesus' name. And this is a controlling spirit. We break that power of that controlling spirit that comes against you, dystonia. We break it now in Jesus' name. We release your healing virtue. Joint muscle pain in the neck and shoulders, shoulder pain, stiffness in the neck, arm pain, all of that, we think we thank you that Kathleen is healed. Yes, we release the power healed. of the Holy Kathleen. Spirit to Kathleen. We say, Freedom. be healed now in Freedom. Jesus' name. We thank you that you are a child of God. Jesus we release the name. blessing of God. We thank you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father. We thank you, Father. We're um we thank you for, for William. Been praying for William, yep. completely healed. healed. Thank you, been healed. Uh, lungs for her. And we pray for your lungs to be healed in Jesus' name Jesus completely. Lord. I think they I think she said has been. Okay. 
has uh, has a, I'll pray that he has a completely been completely healed. completely been healed. All right, so praise Lord in Jesus' name, Hallelujah. We love you guys too. We miss you. Look forward to connecting with you yes. again soon. Bless you all. Anyone else to be healed? We thank you for the peace and the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank God for his miracle working power. As we are praying, it releases agreement. And as much as you can agree with that, um, he is he's healed and you need healed. So okay. we thank you for Tiffany. Yeah, that we command your lungs. I think it was yes. pneumonia. We command pneumonia right. to be healed in Jesus name. We, we command uh, the lining of your lungs to be restored, the lining of your lungs to be restored, the rawness in the inflammation to be healed. Yes. Uh, we command it all Open to be healed up. in Jesus name. No more constriction, no more constriction, no more laboring for your breath. Uh, and this is a, this is a lying spirit. We thank you. We break that. It's trying to, uh, it's not only just attacking you, your lungs, cause you've been dealing with this for a little bit. It's attacking your gift of worship. And we break that off of yes. you. We thank you that the assignment on yes, Tiffany's yes, life for as a worshiper, demands large capacity in our lungs. And so we release yes. that, the assignment, the calling on God on you separates you from this. And I just feel the power of God releasing right now. This, it, I just feel the power of the Lord releasing on you. And we say, be healed in yes. Jesus name. Amen. All of you. Anxiety being healed. And yes. we release that now. We release the power of God power to everyone. Michelle, we release you to be bodies. healed in Jesus' name. We look forward to the testimonies. Yes, share Let with us. us. Know yes. Testimonies. We need to know because it really increases faith in people to know that Jesus is the same today as he was in Bible days or as he is in Africa. You know, uh, that he heals today because he is still Joe for Rafa. And it helps us know that we're hitting the target. And yes. So continue yes. to in, in, encourage us as we can in, encourage other people. Yes. And keep moving Jesus deeper into the world because the world needs Jesus right now. And, and, the, and the best receivers just say thank you. So for the rest yeah. of the evening, just, just say thank you, Jesus, thanks, for healing me. Amen. Amen. All right. We look forward to connecting with y'all. And um, yeah, we have a lot of things coming. I, I think um, yep. I think my I don't know if my website's up to date with the uh, itinerary, but it will be by the end of this week. <laughs> so let's go. You go can go to tracyarmstrong.com and we have a lot of things that are coming up. So lots, lots of things between now and the new year. Lots of travels yeah. and lots of online stuff. Yeah, busy. Let's go. Let's go. Let's pray some Let more together. Go. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Bless you all. Bless you.